we've had a little fun whenever we had a flat spot in the broadcast talking about Babe Ruth. The last thought I have about Babe, I was uh, pretty young. I must have been, I would say, about 13. I was a member of the uh, Police Athletic League and the Catholic Youth Organization in New York, which meant after school every day there were no lights. I could go to the game free, not on the weekends, not on Saturday and Sunday, but certainly on the weekday after school. Jay Gobert is going to lead it off, hitting fourth there. Anyway, I was in the polar grounds in New York, upper deck and right field. I mean, I can remember that as clear as a bell. And a strike to Gobert. Anyway, there was a commotion. A lot of people were running over to another area, not too far from where I was. So, being a kid, I went over to see what all the noise was about. And there he was, the way you would imagine him. One ball, one strike. There was Babe Ruth. He had a camel coat on and he had a cap. Not a baseball cap, a cap. And the kids were all around him wanting his autograph. That's going to be a strike, one and two. And I can see and hear him now. Just a minute, just a minute. And he reached into one of the side pockets of that camel hair coat. And he took out what I would say was a stack of business cards. The little cards that people use for business. Two and two the count. They were blank on one side. And on the other side was a stamped Babe Ruth signature. So there was no pens or pencils or paper. He just handed out the business cards. And you might say. Did you get one? You bet I did. Do I still have it? Nope. Lost it. I don't know. Disappeared. Probably wouldn't be worth much because it was a stamp signature, but it was the babe. And I must say, it was beautifully handwritten before it became a stamp. Two and two. The worst signatures in America, without a doubt, can be found on baseballs signed by big leaguers. The worst. <laughs> 